Here's an interesting one. This is your standard Williams three through six, seven maybe, sound and speech board pair. And I have recapped this board all the way around. Unfortunately, axial caps are not available in the uh, capacitance that's required there, so I have to use some radials. And I have replaced the chip sockets on the speech board. You can see the old ones were Scanby sockets. These are some nice dual wipe sockets. And let me show you what this thing is doing. It's got a Motorola 6808 in it. And I have my handy dandy sound generation tester here. If I ground any of the input pins, You can see that it's going through its entire uh, repertoire of sound and speech tests, just like as if I press this button. Okay, so my first thought was that one of these input signals was connected to the non-maskable interrupt pin, pin 6 on the processor and that was causing this kind of behavior. Now, it doesn't make any sense, and I buzzed it out. Nothing's attached there. So my next thought was there was an AMI 6810 here, and I replaced the, that 6810 with a known working 6810, and then that didn't yield anything, and then the next step was to replace the sound ROM 2, and I did that, and that didn't yield anything either. So I did some consultation, and uh, one suggestion was to replace the 6532. This is a Motorola. They have a decent track record. But before I went through the trouble of removing this 40-pin chip, which is not too bad, but still a pain in the rear, I decided to try the socketed chip, the 6808, and I replaced it. So let me put a new one in there. I'll be right back. Okay, so I did try the board with the 6808 and those are just rare now they're less capable than 6802 but and in fact everywhere you have a 6808 you can use a 6802 so i'm going to show that here and kill two birds with one stone so this is a known working 6802 that i just pulled from my inventory and i'm going to use my multi-purpose signal grounder to play the first sound. <laughs> so this is now operating exactly as it should. And here is what happens when I press the test button. So we are back to 100% operational. The only other thing I found on this board was the input buffer here, which is a 4050 CMOS chip. One of the gates had failed on it and was causing the sounds to be played incorrectly. Uh, it's like if bit four was always locked on and you sent a bit code of one, then it would think a bit code of five had been sent. So she's back in operation. Thank you so much for sending it.